Hey everybody, this is Brad Bruce and I'm here with Jace Marsiglia. And you're listening to the 5195 Podcast, Episode 2. I think when we left off, we were talking about how we kicked off our... We're going to be filmmakers. We were dipping our toe, you know. Yeah. And it was it was scary. These are big decisions. Yeah. It was scary because yep. I, I was like, now what? You know? Like, sure. it, is it is it film school? for Mm. me is it you know what do i do and now me being you know here in california hollywood was a little more accessible sure you know it it was a it was an hour drive Mm -hmm. you know but then i'm also like okay it's an hour drive to where and to who yeah i'm like am i just gonna start like cold calling and hey i want to be a filmmaker yeah exactly you know okay kid yeah you know, yeah. So I really, I, I almost did. You know, uh, I, I did the same thing you did, not, not so to the point of a screenwriting book, but I got a, a filmmaking book. Okay, and it was like, it was so. I don't want to say, I don't want to say it was like disenchanting, but it was like, you could, yeah, you, you could, you the, could. The more you dig into the film industry as a possible career the more it sounds like you shouldn't even try yeah oh definitely you know definitely it no is more it, it for me it, no became normal sure and so i and and how i how i started was like okay so i read this book And it was like, okay, so I want to be a filmmaker. Okay, cool. What do I want to do? Yeah. You know, and with my background of like always wanting to create things and being more drawn to the horror industry, Mm -hmm. it was like, well, special effects. Okay. You know, and I was like, okay, so let me, let me try my hand at this. So of course, at that time I had to wait for late September to roll around. So Halloween makeup would be hitting the shelves. Oh, sure. Yeah. Just just for quick, cheap, easy yeah. access. And to- I just wanted to see what I could do. So it was literally making up neighborhood kids mm-hmm. and trying my hand at that, stealing my mom's kitchen knives and like cutting them in half and cutting little divots in them and, you yeah. know, all the, all this stuff and like really trying to create these effects and like pull them off but but it was it was it was also like i have no way to document this i don't have a i don't have a camera Mm -hmm. so i'm just Mm -hmm. doing it for myself as of right now yeah you know so i didn't i didn't get into the like the camera part of it for a for a while actually sure It it was a while for me you know so it was just a lot of repetitive you know let me recreate something i saw savini do yeah let me try to do my own version of that again as a callback to the previous episode just to see if you can. Yeah. Yeah. You that, know, that it are, was. You, are you going to fall on your face uh-huh. trying to do something that the pros have been doing? Yeah. Um, with my, with our meager means, you know, because yeah. obviously Savini and them, they're, they're accomplished. They've got these titles under their belts and even they were learning as they went. Yeah. You know, Savini was like, by the time he got to Creep Show, he was like, I've done all these slasher movies. I've never done monsters. Yeah. Creepshow was like his gateway to making prosthetics and yeah. uh, not just prosthetics, but like creatures and bladder effects and mechanics. Yeah. You know, and a lot of the stuff with slasher movies, you can fake that pretty convincingly, maybe not to his level, but making monsters out of nothing, uh, making zombies, you know, his zombies in Dawn of the Dead, he, he kind of laughs at because mm-hmm. it's like they're just green, you know. Then you get to Day of the Dead, and there's texture, and there's bones, and, you know. It's so a complete 180. It is, and he he makes it very obvious from the get that he was honing a craft. So even someone accomplished is never just a pro. They're still learning. They still want to learn. Right. You know, 
And that's that's something that anyone from any level of filmmaking can relate to. Right. I think. I don't think there's a director out there that's not like, yeah, I could do this better next time. Or that, oh, I didn't even think I could do this. Maybe I'll save that trick for, you know. You're, you're just constantly finding new ways to hone your creativity. And it's something that people need to remember if they're starting out. One of the things that always pushed me, and granted, I, I didn't, I wasn't looking at being a filmmaker like you were. I was just like, can I put a story out and sell it? Right. Because I just, I didn't really care about what happened to it afterwards, even though I should have. But at the same time, the books I bought made it very clear that once you've sold this product, it's no longer yours. Right. So they could take something that you slaved over and was passionate about and turn it into a complete piece of shit. Mm -hmm. And you have no say. Mm -hmm. And the book I had even told you, don't even think of being on a set. Right. They don't want you there. Yeah. Because, you know, uh, writers are, you know, eccentric or, you know, they're just, they stand there and watch you cutting their baby up and they're a nuisance. Yeah. And I just kind of was like, well, I know it's a group effort, but I get that. All right, fine. So to me, I was just like, I got to find an agent to hawk my shit, but I'm cool with never setting foot on a set, whatever, you know, I'll still go to my quote unquote film school, uh, by watching my Blu-rays and shit like that. And, and maybe vicariously live through that, but it never occurred to me to do anything beyond just writing it and sending it out. Mm -hmm. And my creep show three script, my practice script, um, gave me the confidence to go, okay, well now come up with something original that you would want to do something with because now, now we're going to get serious. This one's going to be printed out and sent in the mail. Okay. And naively, I just thought, yeah, I'll, I'll send out query letters. You know, I taught you how to write query letters, which frankly, I'm going to be honest with you. I, I still don't think I'm very good at. And Why? I don't know. Maybe it's the perfectionist in me. Maybe it's the idea of summarizing something that I wrote that took a hundred pages, you know, cause I've always looked at it like, you're writing the back of the VHS box. That's what it is. Yes. Your query letter is just, can you sell that? What If I picked this movie up and read what I wrote, would I go, ooh, that sounds good. I'll take this one home. But I was never confident enough in that regard. That felt more like work. Okay. <laughs> I don't, I, I know there's a level of creativity in writing a query letter, a good query letter, but it didn't feel like fun creativity. Okay. That's the selling that I'm like... I could probably pitch something verbally, but query letter feels like homework. It feels like, uh, you know, mm -hmm. you're selling yourself and you're trying to sum it up in so many words and just, eh. Uh. And when, when you're a writer, you're, you're, you're loquacious, you know, long winded. Yeah. You, you, you want to give everything. You want to just vomit it out <clears throat> there yeah. and just be like, this is what I did. This is what I slaved over for months. Please read it. It's just fucking awesome. Yeah. I just want, I just want to hear that you think it's awesome. Just, yeah. But no, it's 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 much more. It's almost like a resume. Mm -hmm. Who the fuck likes writing a resume? Right. It's boring. It's homework. So, I've never felt comfortable with query letters. Um, but that was what I, that was the part I was at. I was at query letter status, mm -hmm. you know. And I, I guess I did. I did kind of jump ahead. I did come up with a new script. I hammered it out over the course of maybe six months, just because. This wasn't a creep show three. It wasn't five stories I pulled out of the out of a book. Now I'm pulling things out of the ether. Okay, okay. this is 100% me. So it took a little while. Um, creep show was good practice for formatting and all that. Considering I still didn't have anything like Final Draft. Didn't, yeah, didn't even know that shit existed. Um, but I hammered out this script. I go on a web. I forget how I stumbled upon it, but. Some website, uh, I think it was called Zubody. Uh, I don't remember exactly what it was, but Zubody was holding a competition. Okay. They they wanted a horror script. And I'm like, okay. So I kind of read over the, um, you know, kind of the criteria and was like, okay, um, they're kind of just looking for anything, just as long as it's good. There was it wasn't anything like avoid this, avoid that. It was just 
you know, and it was being one of the critics, one of the judges, I should say, was uh, Michael Meltzer. He was uh, one of the producers of The Hidden. Okay. You remember The Hidden? Mm-hmm. Um, so it was somebody who'd worked with New Line. Yeah. You know, he was a Bob Shea guy. So I'm like, oh, so this is legit. You know, to me, yeah. this is legit. And I was like, okay, so what do I do? Do I do I do the competition thing? You know, I'm like, the, the book really didn't go into competitions. The book just kind of said, send it to agents. Yeah. The book even, and I understand this, was like, do not talk to people at conventions. Even though it's worked for some people. Yeah. You know, you, conventions are sometimes a good place to network. But the book was very strict about you need to just send query letters and yeah. get an agent, you know. So I kind of was like, well, maybe I'll try this contest and just see what happens. I submitted my new script. I got an email within two weeks saying you're a finalist. I'm like, I didn't even know. I, I thought, you know, you think like American Idol. Okay, you're in the next level. And then you get to the next level. And they keep weeding people out. I kind of jumped to finalist. And that worried me. Because I'm just kind of like, well, where's the competition? This just felt like I submitted something. Did they even read it? It just felt quick and easy. And it came down to me and two other people. And when I say two other people, it was one other script written by two people. Okay. Okay. I don't remember the names or anything. They left it up to voting. And when I say voting, I mean, tell your friends and family to vote for you every day and the winner will win the script contest. And I'm like, okay. And again, not knowing anything about any of this, I'm just like, okay, cool. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll tell my folks I'll get on MySpace at the time. <laughs> uh, you know, I'll, I'll farm out all these, you know, hey, man, here's the link. Go vote for me. And the link for the voting was just so bad. Yeah. There were hacks and shit that you could get in and just vote a million. You could literally tap it a million times and it would count. Yeah. And then they would... They'd be like, okay, there's no way that you got like 10,000 votes in one day. We're going to clear it out. We're going to try again. We're going to get the bugs out. And it was just kind of a nightmare. Uh, eventually, I lost. Long story short, I lost to these other two people. And I was like, well, I was a finalist on my first try. Which, again, you know, Michael Meltzer was, was a name. Right. Um. So I was like, somebody liked what I did, I guess, you know, and it came even, even further. Uh, one of the producers behind the contest was like, I really enjoyed this script, dude. I really did. I was rooting for you. And I'm like, cool. Thanks. You know, that was, that's awesome. I was like, but you know, they won, you know, do, do your thing, man. Yeah. He goes, well, th- here's the thing. He goes, I like your script enough that I kind of want to farm it out. He goes, I kind of want to get people to look at this. I was like, I didn't win, but if you want to, you know. Yeah. Because, again, I don't know how any of this works. So I'm thinking, oh, I networked. You know, I networked. Yeah. Somebody thinks enough. So, weirdly enough, the guy who said he was going to farm it out, he started getting back to me with notes. And I'm just kind of like, well, are you are you doing this? Are you a producer? And he's just like, you need to change this, 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 and this. And I'm like, okay. So I go back in and I start changing all these things based on what this guy said. Yeah. And eventually <clears throat> it just fizzled out. And to be quite honest, the people who won, I don't even know if anything happened with them. Really? I really don't. I don't remember their names. I couldn't look them up on IMDb or anything right yeah. now. Maybe you need the Leonard Moulton video. Back. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> but it was just one of those deals where eventually I kind of decided maybe nothing was going to come of this. Maybe there was an exposure thing. But I was just kind of like, even if I won, I'm not sure it would have mattered. It just didn't It didn't seem like there was anything for them either. You know. So I took it as a feather in the cap. I just kind of went, you know what? I put out my new shit. 100% original, and somebody liked it. So that's when I started doing the query letters. So you took away a positive from it. I did, because I, <clears throat> I had nothing to compare it to. Well, that's fucking great. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know, I was just kind of like, well, cool. You know, and maybe it, naively I thought, 
well, shit, maybe I've got something enough that, yeah, this will be a cakewalk. I'll just get it in front of someone else and they'll like it. Yeah. That's not the way it goes. In fact, I was told the, the same book was basically like, if you get a no, that's great because someone took the time to tell you no. Because most of the time, you're not going to hear shit. You won't. You could send out 100 query letters. If you hear back one out of 100, you consider yourself lucky, even if it is no, because they just don't have the time. You know, so I was like, then it occurred to me, I'm not even going to get this script under someone's nose until I get past the query letter part. And one of the people I sent it to who was really sweet, um, she was one of the victims in Friday the 13th 7. Her name is Stacy Greason. She was an actress and then became a literary agent. So I sent it to her, a letter, and... She responded, and it was like, I like the idea, but not for us at this time. And I just kind of went, cool. And again, it was like, first try, you know. And a response. And a response. And I'm just kind of like, this isn't so bad. You know, I'm like, I can keep doing this, and it, all it takes is the one yes. Mm -hmm. And that was the problem. That confidence really disappeared pretty quick. And I kept trying to hustle, and then eventually it was like, this sucks. This really sucks. About how long you think? Like, how, like, time wise? It's probably covered two years. Okay. And in that time, I got back to work writing more stuff. How many, how many, how many letters do you think you sent out? Uh, I probably sent out 200 emails. Okay. Physical letters. Probably 50 or 60. Okay. Just because, let's see. Still be, a high number, though. High number, but it was one of those deals where I'm like, today's day and age, email. And they can delete it if they want. I, I kind of knew then that I'm like, this is, seems like an antiquated way of getting attention, you know. So I, I, I was sending emails to, you know. But you were following a formula that, that you were... I was. That you read, you know, and so you acquired the knowledge of, I'm gonna, this is how I'm going to do it. This is what I thought was 101. Yeah. You know, and I'm just like, this is just how it happens. And nothing was happening. So I stopped. And then, um, you know, and the thing is, a lot of people will probably understand this, especially writers. If you're passionate about writing, you can quote unquote, quit dozens of times. And I did. There were so many times where I threw my hands in the air and was just like, this isn't going to happen for me. Fuck this. And then I'd be right back behind the computer again. Of course. You know, because we just, we, we can't, we can't damn that. Well, you know what? I think, I, I think the, the quit is a, a symbolic thing. It is. For ourselves. It's, it's, it's a, it's a tantrum. It's a frustration. Yeah. But it's never permanent. No, no. <laughs> No. In hor in horror lingo, we have so many final chapters. You know, yeah. I am fucking done. <laughs> Wait, no, I'm not. A new beginning. You know. Yep. <laughs> so, I did that a lot. I, I there was a lot of him and Han, and you know, just being like this. This is terrible. You know, nobody likes my shit. And then I got real frustrated one day and said, "I'm gonna write something so cheap." Like a like a one location story, and it'll be one of those deals where I thought what was keeping me from doing anything was budget. Really, I thought maybe what I'm writing is too high concept. Okay, maybe what I'm writing is something that people just aren't willing to throw the money at. So I'm like, out of spite, I wrote basically what could amount to a stage play. Okay, and I wrote it in a week. I just hammered this fucking thing out and it was on, on pure anger. Like I was just like, I'm going to just write this fucking thing, you know? And did that translate to the page? Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Get this. I sent it to Trinkus International. Okay. So we're talking to Cod past the first round. They're like, we really like this. We're Ambitious as hell. Yeah. But I was pissed. It was one of those deals where I'm just like, fuck you. I'm going to do this. And I sent it to Trankus, just thinking, I don't fucking care. Just say no. Fine. Yeah. And instead, someone goes, I really like this. I'm going to send this upstairs. So then a week or two later, whoever that was said, I really like this. I'm going to send it further. I'm like, F I'm like, oh, my God. 
I'm like, all I had to do was get fucking pissed and shitty about it. You know what I mean? And then it got probably to the person just below Malik. No shit. And they finally said, not for us, but thank you. It's a hell of a climb though, man. It was. And it was kind of scary because I'm just like, this might work. Yeah. And it was just funny to me because it was such a spite script. It was just something I slapped together. Like, yeah. I, I've got to have some level of talent because this was, I just slapped this thing together and I didn't even give it like a second draft. Yeah. No shit. Like the balls on me. Okay. Like I just was like, I'm just going to fucking do this. And I sent it. You submitted a, a first draft. A first draft. And it climbed like three rungs at Trinkus. <laughs> That's pretty fucking impressive, man. I thought so too at the time, but I'm just kind of like, so what? Do I have to just be so fucking pissed every time I get behind the computer? That's that's the secret. I got it's the Hulk. I'm I'm always mad. Yeah, I'm just always mad, and that's the secret of my success. And it's just it was one of those deals where it was just so funny to me, and I'm just like, oh well, okay. But again, it was another feather. I'm like, I climbed some rungs at Trankus. These are the people behind Halloween. Yeah. You know, these are the Akkads. Yeah. So I was just like, that's fucking cool. So I went another year or two trying to hawk that script. Nothing. So then I was like, you know what? Um, maybe screenwriting's not my thing. And it Ooh. wasn't it wasn't really a quit. It was just kind of like, I still want to write. Redirect. Redirect. And I started writing columns okay and i was just writing columns about shit that i liked you know i nobody gave me an assignment but i wrote a column basically about being a bullied kid you know as, as a child i was bullied a lot and finding solace in carrie and christine and i kind of titled it something along the lines of our our brother and sister in the fray Something like that. Because Carrie and Christine are basically the same story, just it's a boy in the car, uh -huh. you know. And I wrote, that. I poured my heart out into this thing and was just like, this is why horror was there for me. Because I had movies that I could look at and be like, you get it. I identify. These guys, yeah, they get it. So I wrote this column, and then I wrote another column for about a really obscure horror movie called Cellar Dweller. Do you remember Cellar Dweller? Of course, Dweller? of course. Yeah, Empire Pictures. Yeah. Um, I'd written an article, and it, this sounds so vain and just so self-flagellating, but I wrote a column about kind of reigniting my, my love of horror and going on a pilgrimage, if you will, to find Cellar Dweller. Because it was so obscure and so many video stores were dying that I hopped in the car with a buddy of mine. We flew all over Michigan, southeast Michigan, every video store we could find to find this movie because both of us had seen it as kids. We'd never seen it since. It never got any airplay. It never made it to DVD. Nothing like that. I'm yeah. like, the tape is out there somewhere. And the entire article was like this Bill and Ted's excellent adventure type of thing where we're hunting down cellar dweller, you know? And I submitted that column to a couple different magazines and the one who uh, responded was one called, um, oh, shit. <laughs> I forget the name. That impactful. Well, it didn't go anywhere. You know, there, there might have been two issues. Um, but it was, a, it was a women's horror magazine. Okay? okay. And for some reason, being the token guy, I guess, it was, I, I, I compared it to like it was Fangoria meets Cosmo. Okay. And it was pretty cool. I don't want to call it like femme fatale or something, you know, it was yeah. like, nothing like that. But it was this little burgeoning magazine and the editor in chief read both articles and was like, this is fun. You're a fun writer. And I'm like, okay. So they got published. Um, the one about Carrie and Christine, it's, it's in a magazine somewhere. Scream Sirens. That was the name. Oh, okay. Do you okay. remember that? Does I do it, remember that. Scream Sirens maybe only had about... It had a decent run though. It had about... Three three or four actual hard copy magazines yeah and then it kind of did the online it thing. did online yes um so those articles were published and i i went to the editor i think her name was conjura 
and she said, I said, Hey, I got this idea. I was like, this is, this is a female centric magazine. What if I wrote like a love letter to the f- women of horror, every issue, different chick. I just cover their career and say why they're awesome. She goes, yeah, I like that. So first one I did was for Tiffany Shepis. I wrote this thing for Tiffany. Second one was for Debbie Rashan. And the third was for Felissa Rose. Granted, this isn't screenwriting. Okay. This is just journalism, I suppose. I went to a convention in Michigan. We have a convention over there called Motor City Nightmares. Um, Tiffany Shepis and Debbie Rashan were going to be there that year. So I was like, I'll just print these out and hand it to them. I was just curious. You know, just, just to give you something. Both of them loved it so much that they were like, they gave me like hugs when I met them. They're yeah. like, this is so fucking cool, man. In fact, I have an autograph from Tiffany Shepis that writes, Jason, you make me sound like a badass. <laughs> Tiffany Shepis. You know, and I'm just, I, I, I cherish these things so her and debbie were just so awesome about it and they were just like keep doing this so i wound up writing ones for like barbara crampton adrian barbeau uh daniel harris you know i i knocked out a bunch and uh some of them didn't see the light of day because the the magazine kind of folded but felissa got a hold of hers and was like who's this guy and that kind of became a thing she contacted me no and was like you're a really good writer she goes she actually said something to the effect of i read your column and i feel like i could fly and i was like well thank you and she goes no thank you you're very talented and i hope you stay in touch kind of thing and then a mutual friend of ours who was at a party with her uh she brought me up and was just like what else does he do and the mutual friend was like, well, he screenwrites. And she goes, really? Does he have anything I can read? So this guy got back to me and was just like, Phyllis is very open to a script. Can you write a short? And I said, yeah. You know. And he had this idea. And it was about like a cannibalistic demon mother kind of thing. And he just basically gave me the skeletal. It's got to be about this, and this happens, and I'll just let you do the rest. So I was like, okay. So I wrote this, sent it to him and Felissa, and they went nuts over it. And there were very few notes. I was just like, okay. I didn't expect anything. And that's where you came in. That's when someone said, you need to talk to Brad Bruce. And I was like, "Eh, okay. You know, because it was just by this time... I'd been beaten, you know, and the magazine had folded. Whatever was a, a new outlet, maybe possibly a new career choice, was gone. Um, so when they were like, yeah, talk to Brad Bruce, I was like, okay, I'll look for him on Facebook or whatever, you know. But it was just genuinely, I was just kind of like, if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. I've been down this road before several times. So yeah. even my connection to you... Even though it bore fruit, I went into it very guarded. I was just kind of like, I don't expect anything out of this. Because I'd, I'd kicked out, by that point, maybe eight or nine scripts. And none of them moved. Okay. And I was just like, well, maybe I just can't cut it. And I'm like, well, Felissa likes this one, this short. I'm like, I don't know what you do with a short film. Right. I don't know. Yeah. I didn't know anything about it, and I didn't care. Right. I hate to say it. It was cool, because it was like... The chick from Sleepaway Camp likes your fucking script. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. I was like, that's cool. I, I, I love that. And I, I was still kind of on the high from Shepis and Rashawn. Uh, I had written one for Dee Wallace and she loved it. And it was just one of those deals where I was making friends because I was basically writing love letters to them. You know what I mean? Just all encompassing career defining shit. Yeah. That was just like, uh, you know, this doesn't really take any talent for me to talk about how talented you guys are. But it opened doors and Felissa's opened the door for me to meet you. You know, yeah, it's, it's crazy. Like I know for me, like wanting to be a special effects artist. Yeah. It was, I took pictures Mm -hmm. to sort of create a portfolio of my work. Oh, so like you were putting stuff together and and then then taking pictures. So I was like, you know, cause I told, you know, cause like my parents always championed what I wanted to do. Really? I was never met with like, that's not real work. 
Sure. You can't do that. It was like, yeah, go for it because you're fucking good at that shit. Yeah. So, so I, I was like really like leaning heavy towards special effects, creating this little portfolio and also being creative as far as like writing, Mm -hmm. writing like short stories and stuff and like, you know, comics and then, you know, me and my friends getting together and drawing them and, you know, doing that. And I remember my first reach out to quote unquote, the industry was the comic book industry. Oh, I had reimagined the Fantastic Four. Huh, okay. So I sent... And that's big. I, I sent this draft that I wrote of the Fantastic Four, basically giving them an upgrade. Okay. Making their suits more tactical, making them a little more like, you know, mercenary badass kind of. Kind of like when Jim Lee added all the pockets and... Well, it's, it. it's really funny you say that because I had done this prior, okay? Prior to Jim Lee's yes. Uh, X-Men yes. thing? Yes. Okay. Yeah. But this was like Fantastic Four. Sure. That I went for, I went after. So I sent the letter off to Marvel in mm-hmm. New York and checked my mailbox every single day. As you would. Yeah. It's, it's impossible not to. Yeah. And then one day, I got the letter. I still have the letter. Uh, you, Probably it, on it, Marvel it, letterhead and everything. Not only was it Marvel letterhead, the the envelope, it's got Spider-Man on the envelope. How cool. And I open it up and I see the Caseta Jr. Oh, signature wow. on the bottom. Wow. And I was like, all right, crack my knuckles. Here we go. I'm fucking, I've, I'm going to be flying out to New York. I made it. I'm going to be doing it. I open up the letter. I look at it. Basically, the fuck out of here. We don't oh, want your man. shit. Man. So I, much fanfare I, too. I, I took it I took it so hard. Well sure. Yeah. I took it so hard I backed off from writing. Sure. You know, and, and I, I focus more on like the special effects. And then um my my parents bought me a camera. Mm-hmm. So then I started shooting stuff, you know, shooting little films, not even writing, just like you do this, you do that. Right. You know, and like, just like kind of... Almost just, like someone who learns uh, music phonetically. You, you're, you, nothing's on paper. We're just going to no, wing. I, I shot a bunch of these little, these little short films, and I, w- I, I, didn't, I didn't know that I was honing a craft at the time. Okay. I didn't know that. Sure. I literally... It's a, it's a stupid analogy, but it, it's the only one that makes sense. I was like Mr. miyagi myself. Because... <laughs> Trying to get that hype. Self-hype. Because well, what had happened was... By the time it got to the point to where I started recruiting like-minded people to make films, Mm -hmm. all of these little tricks that I was like doing all of a sudden stuck and it was coming out and I was just like, okay, you do this, you do that. We're going to do this. We're going to set this up like this. We need to put a light right here. We need to like have the camera right here. And it was just like, where the fuck did that come from? You were possessed. Then it hit me. I think I'm a director. You found a weird uh, comfort in delegation and the visual, like a director knows where to put his lights right, and all that shit. Right. And you, it sounds like you took to it like a duck to I water. did. And, and it was so just like, I wouldn't say haphazardly, but it was just like, cause I didn't, I, I didn't throw the cards out and be like, okay, well there's, you know, there's sound and, and there's lighting and there's effects and there's this, I wanted to do effects, but like, I didn't. I wasn't married to the idea of effects. Sure. I wasn't. Because it was just one facet that I was like, it's fun, but there's so much more on set that I would love to do. Right. And then when this happened, where it was just like this light went off, and I was like, I think I'm a fucking director. Yeah. Yeah. And so then I just basically ran with that. Hmm. And then so obviously storytelling was easy, coming up with a story, writing stuff. And like, so then we started shooting things essentially here in in this house we're in right now okay and one of the first things that like i had done i had done a 24-hour film race Mm. where which that's high stress it's literally midnight you get a theme and a prop oh you don't even get to come up with it no you just have to work with what they gave you two things those two things theme prop gotcha so it was me and two other guys were waiting on the clock to strike midnight so we can get the email of what our theme and what our prop was. Right. Midnight strikes. There it is. We open it. Your theme is fame. Okay. Your prop is butter. <laughs> God. And I was like, <laughs> fuck. I can't believe that it's butter. Yeah. <laughs> so here's the thing. The other guys that I was with. Okay. So there's a butter monster. 
Right. And I was like, so you want to, at midnight, where there's no stores open, go get 100 pounds of butter and sculpt a monster. And create a monster, yeah. We have to turn mm. this in tomorrow at midnight. Right, yeah. A completely shot, edited film. Oof. I'm like, absolutely not. Yeah, yeah. I said, the butter, we're just going to be doing something with butter. Because it's just a prop. It's just a prop. Yeah. So we literally were like, okay. So we like just came up with this story of there was a, a murder in this town and they never solved it. Okay. And these two guys were like, why don't we go into that house, look for clues, Scooby-Doo style, mm -hmm. and solve this fucking murder. And guess what we'll be? Famous. Yeah. Okay. So I'm literally like texting people that, that said they would help. Yeah. Late at night. Oh, yeah. So I'm like, hey, can you be at my house at six in the morning? <laughs> yeah. And they were like, fine. So I was like, okay, cool. We're going to keep this super, super small. Like we all took turns shooting. Okay. Like all of us. We had essentially four people in the whole movie. It's guerrilla filmmaking. A hundred percent. Yeah. And so, and again, like there was other, like we were going to shoot at this place here in, in town. We got permission to go shoot there. It was going to be a beautiful set. It's called the Lake Elsewhere Naval Academy. Mm -hmm. This place is fucking humongous and it's scary looking. And this would be perfect for this movie setup, especially if I got this wide establishing shot of this place. And oh, then wow. I got that push in and you see these abandoned, decrepit, fucking crazy rooms. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, it's set. This is going to be great. That's a lot of production value. It is, especially for just like fucking so fast. You oh, know? for sure. Yeah. So we wrote the script. I'm going to say 10 pages in like 45 minutes. Sure. Here's the script. Now, you get up and read the whole thing. So I literally just, like, close my eyes. No, that's bad. Okay, we need to change that. Like, I'm trying to do, like, a second draft of this thing. Yeah, on the fly. Yeah. So we did it, and we finished the script, and then we went out because we told the people we're going to show up at 6 o'clock in the morning, or mm -hmm. 6.30 in the morning. Okay, so the actors show up here at the house, ready to go. Mm -hmm. We drive over there, and they don't answer the door. Oh, man. They don't let us in. And I'm like, holy fuck. So at this point, what is there? Like 18 hours. Yeah. It's like watching 24. Tick. No, tick, it was. So then uh, up the road here, there was a housing track that was built, but never finished. Okay. So there's eight model homes fully built. Yeah. But they're just completely abandoned. F lawns grown up three feet. Ooh. You know, I'm like, let's go over there. Yeah. So we drive from the elsewhere over here with the actors who are now kind of like, come on, dude. Right. So like we go over there. Now now it's about seven forty, eight o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Okay. We're like going through each house trying to find the right one. So first of all, we have no Jenny, so we can't have lights. Mm -hmm. Okay. So these windows were boarded up with like giant bolts Ooh. so there's no taking the You're wind not, the, there's no taking the boards off to get light in there's there. no crowbar that's gonna no <clears throat> so we're like what are we gonna fucking light this with flashlights like and so we tried it just it was not looking right it doesn't register no so i'm like holy shit what are we gonna do i'm like we gotta shoot it at my house yeah so this was the beginning of shooting films in my house. Yeah. And so we drove back over here. By now, <clears throat> one of the actors was literally like, I'm going home. <laughs> and I'm just like, dude, please, just humor me. Please. You know. Yeah. And so we got over here. Now, my wife worked graveyard. So she's upstairs asleep. We're about to have a Bonnie situation. Yeah, yes. As they say. Yes. <clears throat> When we get here, I'm running up and down the street, stealing all the neighbor's newspapers. Really? And I'm running in with a handful of newspapers, and uh -huh. I'm just like, overturn the furniture. And I'm ripping newspaper and throwing it all over the house. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Just to create a sense of... Abandonment. Abandonment. Yeah. yeah. Now, what's funny is, we shot the first scene around 4 30, 4 o'clock in the morning. Okay. And it was one of the guys telling the story. So we shot it in my kitchen. Yeah. 
and he's there and he's talking to another friend and he's like we need to go do this blah 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 we'll be Fucking famous buttering bread or something a tortilla okay yeah yeah you know and then he eats it and like he's like come on like let's go yeah and the guy's like absolutely not i'm not going and he's like i'll buy you lunch and he was like a heavier set guy he's like i'm in yeah yeah and so they're off to the races so i was like oh my god this is going fucking smooth this is great and then like all these other shit happen you Mm -hmm. know so uh, we get back here we're overturning furniture we're throwing trash all over the place (laughs) and we we start shooting we shot in black and white okay so i'm spraying chocolate syrup a la hitchcock oh my god all over the place oh my god and like my bathtub is fucking loaded and they go in and they're just like this must be where he did it right no shit but it's like the whole place is covered in blood and they're like analyzing it you know and this guy was never caught and i loved the name of the of the killer Mm -hmm. i just fucking loved it just came to me for some reason i don't know why i named him virgil ridgeway I don't know why, but it just sounded like it a kind of invokes the uh, Green River. Bingo. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So they're upstairs. We're doing, you know, we're doing the scene of them like looking at all this shit, and they hear something, mm-hmm. a crash downstairs. So as they're going downstairs, out of like just out of frame, as they're turning around, you see this guy slowly, Michael Myers style walk into frame and out of frame but only from a side view and now this guy had a bald head okay so he he was skinnier and he pulled it off so he cuts a profile yeah Yeah. and he looked like someone that would be named virgil ridgeway (laughs) cool so then they do the typical split up (laughs) yeah the one guy goes outside and like he's looking around and then he turns around and he's met with him yeah takes him to the ground and he jams his thumbs into this guy's eyes okay and just you hear and just kills him but it was great because all he did was just bend his thumbs in and push him in right and that was like my effects you know sure coming back into play and it looked fantastic Mm -hmm. you know and then like obviously we kill the other guy and then we have the whole little fuck you know the whole the wrap up and all this stuff and we start editing Mm-hmm. So by now it's about seven thirty at night. So daylight's burned. It's history gone. Uh huh. Which is really funny because then my wife walks out and sees her house like this, fucking wrecked from the <laughs> sounds of it. Yeah, and like it, you know, she was just like, whatever. <laughs> okay, whatever. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So we're doing the edit, and I'm like, oh shit, we gotta get to fucking L.A. Is that where you had to turn it in? At the W Hotel in Hollywood. Holy fuck. Now, from here, it's an hour change drive. You got to factor that in. Yeah. Into the time. Yeah. You know. So, what's crazy crazy is we're literally driving down the freeway, Mm -hmm. burning our disc. Oh, my God. And we're getting off on, like, Hollywood Boulevard. It's, like, 3%. Oh my God. 4%. You were burning it on the fly? On the fly. Jesus on the Christ. Fly. We're in a like, mobile studio at this yeah. point. Yeah. And I'm like fucking nail biting, like, oh my God. And my friend is driving and he's like hauling ass. Yeah. We pull up 1152. And I, we, we fucking jam in, give it to my friend, open the door, and boot his ass out. Yeah. And he runs up the stairs. We go up flip a bitch come back and he runs out and he's like we got it wow and now there were i want to say it was like 1500 or 2000 entries really okay all right we made the top five fuck yeah i literally was like i don't care if i win now because i already won that's the validation yeah which i was like okay fuck yeah okay you know i'm cool with that you know and then after that it was like so what's next? And so we started like coming up with other things. We did like some shorts, just like quick jokes. Like I would write a joke and we would turn it into a short. Mm-hmm. And then like producing other people's shorts, mm-hmm. you know, you're throwing stuff to see what sticks. Yeah, it sounds no, like, I, you I know, was, you're I just was like whatever, whatever gives me the practice. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So we shot a couple more shorts and one of the guys that I was doing it with was this like, look, I got to be honest with you, man, this is scaring me. And I'm like, well, what's scaring you? What do you mean? And he's like, well, this is really happening. 
is getting it's getting real yeah he's like there's i feel like there's expectations now and i'm like but that's what we wanted yeah yeah and he's like no bro it's what you wanted <laughs> okay and i was like oh my god so all of a sudden he was gone so this was kind of a lark yeah for him yes you know it's just a fun way to pass some yeah. time and then the <clears> other <throat> guy I, it's not a falling out we just didn't see eye to eye creatively sure and it was like because we you know he would write a script and i would just like you know bro no one talks like this <laughs> right w you need to rewrite it which is probably the first major problem of most scripts is it, just robotic yeah dialogue and well I, I remember there was this one line in the film and it's like i don't want to name names just because you know sure. it's his property but i'm like there was a line that literally said what we need to do is venture out there and see what's going on <laughs> and I'm yeah. like, in a moment of panic you're not going to use the word venture no no it would gonna be like you want to see what's going on you go the fuck out there yeah, yeah i'll be right here where it's safe yes that's a little more realistic yeah you know, so we just didn't see eye to eye. So and there's a pinch of comedy to it. I exactly. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So we just didn't see eye to eye. So we literally, we, we parted ways. Now I'm alone again. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, what? Just next? when the ball was rolling. Yeah. So yeah. now I'm just like, I, I don't know what to do, you know? So, and honestly, I think right now it's probably a good time to wind down this episode okay and then we can you know when we meet up again we'll we'll go into where we, we end up meeting so this is the this is the end of the second part of a trilogy yes yes yeah. sounds good yeah so so on that note i had a blast as usual yeah it's always fun dude. and can't wait to do it again yep all right well until next time see you guys